Hi guys, I'm Jelly Charlie Book Fanatic and today I'm going to do my April wrap up. I'm going to split my April wrap up in a video about my one star, two star and three star reads. I'm going to do a video about my four star and five star reads. Otherwise my April wrap up is going to be a bit too long really and I think this is the ideal way to split up my wrap up. So I'm also going to split up my statistics. I'm going to tell you my statistics about the one star, two star and three star reads I have read in this video. For the month of April I have zero one star books, one two star book and five three star books. Which ups to a total amount of six books in this part of the wrap up. One of those books was written by a person of colour, four of the six books were written by female authors and two of those books were written by male authors. Five of the six books were set in another country than North America or England. Three of the six books had people of colour in them. Five of the six books were fantasy and one of the six books was a contemporary. Five of the six books were young adult and the other one was an adult novel. Now we'll start with my only two star book of the month and that is Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This is a middle grade slash young adult fantasy novel. The story is obviously about a boy called Peter Pan who lives in Neverland and who comes out of Neverland and into these places like London to look for children to take with him to Neverland to build his army to defeat Captain Hook. One night Peter Pan steps into this house where three children are sleeping and those children are called John, Michael and Wendy Darling. Those three children go with Peter Pan to Neverland and create their own existence in Neverland. I don't know what I expected from this story but I expected it to be a lot darker than it actually was because a lot of the stories I heard about it were like Peter Pan is such a dark story in comparison to the Disney adaptation of it and it's obviously a lot different than the Disney adaptation but it wasn't that dark to be honest. This was a really weird story in my opinion. Wendy Darling was very much a mother figure to the Lost Boys. Lost Boys are the crew that Peter Pan has around him. I think there are five boys in total and then there are John and Michael who are Wendy's brothers but Wendy is more like a mother figure to Peter Pan and the Lost Boys than anything else and I expected a love story between Wendy Darling and Peter Pan because they're roughly the same age and I don't know why I ex expected that. I don't know if I've ever seen a Disney adaptation of Peter Pan and if there was a love story in that but I just expected that and that was not what I got at all. Like Wendy was a mother to all of these and that was kind of weird because I obviously expected some kind of romance. I really enjoyed the concept of the story, like the whole idea behind it, but I just didn't like J.M. Barry's execution of it. And since I've read the, the original tale, I have also read a retelling of it, which was called Stars, is the first book in the Wendy Darling series by Colleen Oakes. And I honestly think that book was way better than this one and that should have been the original tale. I'd still recommend reading it though, because everyone will get something different from this story, I believe, and everyone will experience this story differently based on your own experiences and your own childhood so I would still recommend reading this because you may really like this. But you may not know though the Peter Pan story like the actual Peter Pan story is the third book in the Peter Pan series. This is the third book in the Peter Pan series. I haven't looked into the other books because I'm not interested in reading any more by J.M. Barry, but I just felt like pointing that out. Next up on my three star reads and the first book I'm going to talk about is A Spirit Thief which is the first book in the Legend of Eli Mon Press series by Rachel Aaron. This is a young adult fantasy series. It's all about Eli Mon Press who is a thief and in the first book he is planning on kidnapping a king. He is with a swordsman called Joseph and this random girl. I felt like this story wasn't about Eli Mon Press at all. Like the synopsis makes you think it is about Eli Mon Press but I felt like this was very much a story about Miranda and Miranda is a warlock, a magician who comes from a kind of court to this castle to look for Eli Mon Press because that's her job. She has to find Eli Mon Press and then she finds out that the king is kidnapped and she goes on this mission with her magical beast to go and find Eli Mon Press and get the king back to his castle. I felt like the characters were a strong point for this book. Eli was a very funny character. I loved Eli. Eli was amazing. He was cocky, he was arrogant, he was 
funny most of all but i felt like he wasn't selfish in ways he was selfish but he still did so much for the people around him and the people he loved and i also really like miranda she was dead set on doing things her own way and she wouldn't let anyone get in her way i think my favorite part about this book were the dynamics between eli and miranda like they developed a weird kind of friendship throughout this book because they kind of went from nemesis to friends. Reluctant friends, I have to say. But I feel like there's a, a romance, a relationship coming up in the upcoming books, like the later books in the series. And I really, really hope so because I would ship the fuck out of that, like honestly. I hope they don't do it immediately if a romance was created. I just hope it is like a slow burning romance and the romance gets explored in a later book because there certainly wasn't any romance aspect in this book don't worry if you don't really like romance or heavy romance there was no romantic aspect in this book this is a 300 page book but it really bothered me because it felt so short like i flew through it and normally you would think that is a good thing but it wasn't like i felt like it was too short i wanted more from the story i felt like i hadn't experienced anything while quite a lot happens in this book but i wanted more from it i felt like the world wasn't explored enough we get very little information about the world and obviously it's a set of book it's the first book but just because of that, I wanted more world building. One thing I do want to commend the author on is the magic system in this book because I thought it was so original and so unique and I think there was, apart from the characters, my favourite thing about this whole book. Eli has the kind of magic where he talks to inanimate objects and asks them to do things for him. Like, he talks to a three and asks him to help him or give him advice or give him information uh, or he randomly stops in the middle of the forest and he talks to a bush and encourages that bush and whispers them nice things so they will help him later on. Miranda is also a wizard but she has another kind of magic where she has the spirits who become her willing servants and she wears rings and in these rings are these spirits and she can pull this ring off or leave it on, I don't know exactly how it works, but a spirit goes out of it and fights for her. And then there's another wizard group that are called Enslavers, and these wizarding groups do not care at all about the will of the spirits. They just use these spirits any way they want, without thinking about what these spirits want, or if these spirits even want to be in contact with them. They don't care, they just do whatever the hell they want. Again, amazing ma- amazing? That was a combination between magic and amazing. An amazing magic system and I really liked it and I definitely will read the sequel to The Spirit Thief. Next book I'm going to talk about is The Girl of Fire and Thorns, which is the first book in the Fire and Thorns trilogy by Ray Carson. This book had people of colour in it. The book is about a princess called Elisa who has a godstone in her navel. Godstone is basically a kind of diamond given to her by God. She's the first person to have one in a century, I believe and she is married off to this king to form an alliance king she does not know she has never met before El elisa is 16 years old and this king is i think a little bit older he widowed he has a child already and elisa goes off to his court to live there and the story takes off from there so many people died in this book and my heart broke over and over and over I think I cried once or twice, like, so many people die, like, the author wasn't afraid to kill her characters off. A lot of people like the fact that in this book, Elisa has a bit more body weight than is normal, like, she is, she has a bit more fat on her body, and a lot of people liked that the author tried to implement that, and I like that the author tried to implement that too, but I don't like the way she executed it at all. It is not... It is great that you want to create diversity, but this is not the way to do it. The, the way the author did it was she created this character and then every single page or every couple pages she would emphasize that Elisa had more weight on her body, that Elisa was not happy with the way she looked, that Elisa was insecure, that she was not like other people, that people looked weird at her. And every couple of pages, I was getting so sick of it. I was like, okay, I don't think she was that fat. I think she just had a normal body and everyone around her was just fucking thin. I think that was it. 
to be honest. And she was acting like it was the end of the world. I just didn't like it. I didn't. And then, then something happens and Elisa loses a lot of weight and then that is talked about a lot. Like she isn't even fat for most of the book. She becomes thin after something happens and that is emphasized upon. Like she's so happy with herself. Now she has lost weight. What? What is that kind of message? What are you trying to express to your readers here? The cats were all lovable to me, but there was kind of a love triangle in this book and I did not like Elisa with anyone. I think Elisa is way better off on her own, just standing strong, doing her own thing. The entirety of the story and the cast of characters was strong enough to make me want to continue on with the series and the author ended in a way that I don't know what will happen next. She creates a blank slate for the next book in the series and I will definitely continue on with the series to find out what will happen next. Then another three star read for me and this is a really popular book and it is a legend, the first book in the legend series by Marie Lu. This is a book with people of colour in it and Marie Lu is an author of colour. This book is about two main characters. One is a girl called June who is from the elite part of this society and the other main character is a boy named Day who is from the poor part of this society and he is the most wanted criminal. They are suspected of the murder on June's brother and that is the way their parts intertwine. The first book I read by Marie Lu was actually The Young Elite which was the first book in the Young Elite series. It is a series she wrote after the Legend trilogy and I have to say I like The Young Elite more than I liked Legend. I think this may have also been because the language I read it in. The Young Elite I read in English which was obviously the original language The Young Elite was written in and this one is a Dutch copy. I'm Dutch but I don't really like reading in Dutch. It was kind of irritating for me and I think that did affect my rating of the book quite a bit. Apart from the fact that I didn't like the language, I don't feel like continuing on with the series and I'm happy I just have the first book on my shelf and I didn't buy the rest of the series but I felt like the ending was good enough for me and the ending was kind of open-ended but I don't feel like I need anything more from this series. I feel satisfied with the ending this first book gave me. I felt like the characters weren't anything special. I didn't feel connected to any of them. They felt really flat to me. We constantly got told that June was so sad about her brother but we didn't see anything she actually felt. We were told that she was sad but didn't see she was sad and that was something I really missed. Like every single character in this book felt closed off. They didn't show what they felt like none of the characters did and that was what made me feel disconnected from them. Having said that, the plot was fast paced and I wanted to read on when I started it and I felt like I wanted to finish it and I did. A lot of people have liked this. If you haven't read it, you probably should read it. It isn't a bad book. It just wasn't for me. Dystopian is not my genre. The Hunger Games was I think the only trilogy I really liked in that genre and I think I should keep it at that. The next story I'm going to talk about is Legion which is a novella in this bind up by Brendan Sanderson. This is a novella in a series by Brendan Sanderson that I haven't read. The series is also called the Legion series and this book has people of colour in it. And this novella was a very unique story. It's kind of hard to explain but it's about a guy called Stefan or Stephen Leeds who has a kind of a multi-personality disorder. He sees this people like he's kind of schizophrenic but he sees these people around him that no one else can see and these people actually tell him things like they all have different personalities one knows everything about guns there's another one who knows different stuff and they all tell him how to solve the riddles and puzzles and situations around him but the things they say to him he already knows like he already knows these things about guns that he gets told because they're obviously a figment of his own imagination. He's a missing inventor of a camera and when you take a photograph with that camera it can capture a situation from the past. Like when you take a picture in for example Amos Church you can see on the picture what happened at a specific point in time. I definitely don't regret reading this. This was a spontaneous pick from the library for me. It wasn't even on my TBR but I wanted to read something different and I was walking through a library and I saw it by Brendan Sanderson. I was like it's short 
why not? I did feel like I wanted to know more about these people in Steven's mind. Like, they were all so interesting and I was so interested in all of their personalities and all of the things they had to say. And I also wrote down, it's like Monica, who is one of these fragments of Steven's imagination, says. He says in the book, Steven is actually brilliant, but he tries to relieve himself from this burden by creating these hallucinations. Which is what I just said. I really like that quote. I will definitely read the book Set Off because it's a full novel after this novella that is written after this novella really I think so it's more it's explained more in that and I honestly cannot wait to find out more about this specific type of kind of magic I want to say but it's really not it is set in our own world though which is really cool because Brennan Sanderson writes his own worlds like it, for example the Mistborn trilogy uh, the Mistborn series in general, and this one is set in our own world. The last book I'm going to talk about is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And Then There Were None is about 10 people who get invited to this private island, they all go, they all have a different story, some of them don't even know the host, some of them do, but they all go to this private island and they all meet each other, and then they find out they can't leave this island and they all get accused of a murder or multiple murders, and people get killed off one by one and they find out there is no one else on this island, the host isn't there, except the people they are with at that point in time. Like, so one of these people they are with is killing off the rest of the guests. And this book is a classic mystery. This book wasn't anything special to me and you know what, that's okay. I'm glad I read it anyway. This wasn't on my TBR in the first place. I wouldn't have picked um, a mystery novel for myself because I'm not really interested and definitely not in Agatha Christie's books. But it was nice to read a book by her once but I'm not going to read anything else by Agatha Christie. I picked this book because it was on one of my challenge lists. Like, I had to pick a book that was in the top 100 mystery novels ever and I picked this one because I didn't know any of the other ones and I have played a video game of this book once and I was interested in it so I thought I would pick up the book which was also quite short. I had made up my mind about the murderer fairly early on and I thought I was right up until the ending and then I wasn't but I also was not surprised by the eventual killer. Like I don't know, I felt like the book fell flat to me and I think I would have been surprised if it was someone else, but I wasn't surprised by the person the author picked to, um, to be the murderer. I also felt like the actual murderer had a weak backstory, and if there's something I can't stand, it's a weak backstory. I didn't understand why he was the murderer. Like, there's a whole letter at the end of the book from the murderer about why he was killing these people, but I honestly thought it was just weak. I don't think I'll ever pick up another book by Agatha Christie, but it was, it's okay. I rated this book three stars. If you like mystery novels I recommend you read this because obviously Agatha Christie is a very huge name in this industry but it was just not for me I didn't like the writing style I didn't really like anything about it I didn't even think it was particularly fast-paced like I expected it to be but it was okay I wouldn't read it again and I won't read anything else by Agatha Christie so those are my two star and three star reads for the month of April I hope you like this video let me know what your one star two star and three star reads for were for the month of April, let me know down below. Thank you for watching, goodbye!